the way it all got started was uh, back in the early 80s, uh, John Postel walked in, he was my boss, walked into my office and said, five people had these ideas for ways to do a distributed registry, distributed phone book of the internet, if you will. And could I kind of take a look at all the proposals and create a compromise? Um, but basically what I did was I stole the name off of one of them and then put my own stuff and nobody seemed to notice. Uh, there's a common story about a lot of the stuff that happened in the, in the internet is that uh, people got the job to do something and had so much fun doing it because nobody at the time thought it was important. And it was clear because I was a recent graduate and this was a nice little project where all of the, while all the important people were off doing other things. Now it turned out to be a very important thing, um, but nobody at the time thought it was. Uh, you know, the influences that shape the work, people usually say, well, I took those five proposals. But in reality, it was work that I had done earlier at, uh, at MIT with uh, Nicholas Negroponte and the architecture machine folks and a bunch of other influences ahead that sort of shaped my thoughts. And this just kind of, and it, they gave me a blank sheet of paper and thought I was supposed to copy onto it, and I didn't. So that's how I got to do it. Um, over the years now, if I take a look at it, the way to think about it is I maybe built the basement and first floor of a building and other people have added 10, 20, 30 stories on top of it. So when you look at it all and all of the things that it's used for and so forth, a lot of that's been done by other people after I kind of did the first steps. And so that's how we got to where we are today. Did you ever think that it was going to have such a profound impact on society? Well, I, I always say that the one thing I was sure was that I didn't know exactly how it was going to evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, the right way to build things is to build it as a set of flexible tools that people can use to do whatever they want. And it's hard to predict what they're going to want to do. Yeah. Um, I must admit that if you take a look at the early days, uh, I was designing it f so that you would be able to create 50 million names that, you know, the engineering and so forth would hold up, much like you design a bridge so that it could hold so many tons. Right. Um, and today there's probably a billion or so. So we're about a factor of 20 larger than my fondest dreams then. Yeah, and um, what kind of obstacles did you face when you were making it? Well, the funny part of the story was that uh, when I originally got the job and I was writing down the specifications that everybody was supposed to agree to in the design, uh, people would look at the design and they would go, it was much too complicated, there's more things I should cut out, it wasn't simple enough, and so forth. And that was a compromise, because I was trying to get sort of the most stuff possible into the first launch, but still have to be able to kind of get off the ground and be accepted. Uh, today people always talk about how there's all these things missing from it. Um, and it's sort of fun, because one definition of success that I use is, if you, in the early days, the, the question was to try and get as much going in the first release as possible um, and that there's a measure of success that is that you can do that, get something launched and then a little ways down the road, five years or whatever, people say, oh gee, I wanted more. Right. Um, you know, because that's one of the challenges is that people, engineers always design things that are either so grandiose they can't get started um, and not think about adding to it in the future, which I think is being able to add stuff like we've done on the internet. It's hard for you to probably imagine an internet without a web browser, but we had one. Um, and, uh, or an internet without music, but we basically had one. And then uh, all of those things got added. So, you know, building something so you can add to it is sort of, I think, one of the, the, the ways to tell good engineering. When you had the idea, um, did it, was it like a, you were just sitting there and it came on you, or was it? Oh, absolutely. Like absolutely not. Uh, you know, part of it was that uh, that was 1983, and about 10 years earlier at MIT, I had been building file systems uh, on mini computers, and people told me I couldn't do something on such a small machine. But I figured out how to fit it in, and at both MIT and later at UC Irvine, I had putting together systems out of multiple computers. And so when you take a look at the DNS, um, most of it came from that background and kind of marinated in my mind for five, ten years before it really went down on paper in the spec. Uh, most people don't believe that, but that's what I believe, because the principles 
early on about how you design things and how you think about things, I think, shape your work for pretty much forever. Yeah. Um, is there anything else? I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. One of the, an interesting story is my kids go to school just up the way. Uh -huh. And you know, when you have that uh, browser, it lets you either type in a domain name like www.google.com uh -huh. or you can type in the Google bar. Right. So the funny story was I'm talking to the teacher about the computer class. And she says, well, I keep trying to tell your boys how to use it, but sometimes they don't pay attention. And I said, well, like what? She says, they keep trying to type in domain names, and I say they should just type words into the Google bar and not use domain names. So that's one of the sort of oh. funny things that happen. When they're, they're kind of 9 and 11 now, back when they were much younger, what they used to do is when a bus went by with a www on it, they would say, dot com, dot com, daddy did dot com, as the bus would go oh. by. Um, so it's funny how this technology, uh, you know, has happened. Uh, one of the things about it, though, is, is that if you work in internet technology, nothing there, I don't think, lives forever. Um, I always tell people, people come to me and they're students and they say, I want to do something that has an impact, you know, 20, 50, 100 years from now. I said, well, you know, you should compose music because, you know, Mozart's managed to last for hundreds of years, but none of this technology stuff is going to be around for as long. It all gets replaced. Um, you know, just like the camera that you're holding would have been probably too heavy for the floor several years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, technology evolves, and so you've just kind of, kind of got to used to that idea. But this had a better run than most. Definitely. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a great talking to you. Sure.